Good morning everyone, my name is Alexander Robinson and welcome to my travel channel. So it is day one of my vacation at Universal Orlando Resort. Right now it's about 6, 11 in the morning, it's still nighttime out there and I don't feel ready to go. But I'm up this early because I gotta do early park admission for Universal's Islands of Adventure. This is my first time going to any of the theme parks since 2008 and I gotta get ready so I will be right back. Now I'm ready. It's still nighttime outside, but let's go. The only bummer about being up this early for early park admission is that I don't get to see uh, Cabana Bay in the daytime quite yet. <laughs> it's just a few minutes till 7 a.m., so I'm just hanging out in the lobby here. Eating a bagel that I picked up from the commissary last night, uh, and then I'll head outside and head to Islands of Adventure. All right, got off the shuttle, got past security. I am now on the moving walkway. Let's officially start this day. City Walk is pretty dead right now, so I'm wondering how that affects my chances for early park admission and getting to Hagrid's first thing in the morning without any long lines or complications. But I see the lighthouse up ahead. Let's uh, see what the progress is over there. By the way, I saw this movie early. I'll have a review for it on my movie TV review channel if you want to check it out when it comes up. It doesn't look like there's many people here, or I'm sorry, it doesn't look like there's anyone here. Which usually, when I saw videos for early park admission from other vloggers, the line would stretch out all the way to the bridge here, so... This might work out better than I imagined. Then of course, uh, there's the Incredible Hulk right there, which I couldn't show you because it was nighttime. And there's Doctor Doom's Fearfall, both part of Marvel Superhero Island. It wouldn't be a supervillain's fortress or torture machine if it weren't covered in a thick layer of fog. Yeah, no crowds. My ideal theme park weather. This could be an excellent first day at Universal Orlando Resort. And we're also greeted to one of my favorite pieces of music in theme park history, which they had turned off last night when I came out here to show you guys the entrance to Islands of Adventure. I just absolutely adore this music. Yeah, there's nobody here. Okay, I take that back. There's a small crowd out there in the distance, but that's nothing. They're opening the gates right now, but that may just be the team members setting up. It's only 7.30ish, so we still got like 30 minutes. It's now 7.47 and the gates are officially open. Here's what the line has looked like since I've been here. Yeah! They lost. Oh, they're still going. Yeah. Man, it's decked out to Christmas, even though today is October 31st, Halloween. The adventure begins. <laughs> to give you an idea of how long it's been since I was last here, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe was not a thing. They just announced The Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Simpsons was under construction, and there were only three Jurassic Park movies instead of six. That's how long it's been. I hear Velocicoaster, but I can't see it because there's trees and fog. Here's Seuss Landing, which again is not open yet. All decked out for Christmas. It's been 15 years since I was last here, so I'm just going to follow the crowd. Over this way is an empty Seuss Landing, and this way 
Think left and think right. Think low and think high. Uh, we'll catch that later. And here's what remains of the lost continent. Uh, because there's not a whole lot to do here. I mentioned that the last time I was here, they had just announced the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So the Lost Continent still had Dueling Dragons, still had Flying Unicorn, still had the Eighth Voyage of Sinbad, and this was still open, Poseidon's Fury, which is now permanently closed, but I do like how there's no scaffolding or barricades around it. They took away the logo, but it still provides for cool photo opportunities. And this is the first time I am seeing the original Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I'm so used to one at Universal Studios Hollywood that seeing Hogsmeade in this area, it's, it's weird. It looks the same, it feels the same, but it's just not the same. And this is certainly not the same. 45 minute wait, let's do this. To rent a locker, please scan your park ticket on a locker station that has a green light. If this were Universal Studios Hollywood, this would be the queue for DreamWorks Theater. We do not have something like this at Universal Studios Hollywood. So this is, this is unique. Oh, those two people got their own bike. Nice. It only feels like yesterday that I remember this area being dueling dragons. So, I'm sure Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure is a great follow-up. I'm assuming this is a pre-show of some kind because that looks like a screen. Maybe not. Today's lesson involves magic road bikes. Their movements are dynamic and suddenly accelerations tilting. Another lesson involves So that was actually far, far more intense than I thought it would be. It's been a while since I've been on a really insane coaster like that. So yeah, that's Hagrid's. It's 8.15 now. Let's go to the other big thing we can do at early entry. As we make our way to Jurassic Park and go to the Velocicoaster, I want to point out some of the differences of this Wizarding World compared to the one in Hollywood. Uh, for example, this area would be Ollivander's. This is uh, something else. And Ollivander's is right here. We also don't have this uh, snowman here. There is a Butterbeer cart here, and there's a uh, Hogwarts. The Triwizard Spirit Stage and Frog Choir Stage is different. Uh, what's this called? Hippogriff. Fly the Hippogriff is slightly different. And this entrance right here does not take you to the back way of Wizarding World. It takes you to a bridge. Welcome to Jurassic Park. That classic gate looks so good. Uh, I love Jurassic World the ride at Universal Studios Hollywood, but park beats world any day. Velocicoaster is only 15 minutes. 
This whole pathway is new to me. I have had the Velocicoaster poster as my wallpaper for so long, and now it's time to experience the ride itself. Loving these statues here. Oh, I hear. Oh boy. Oh boy. So I have never done a roller coaster that shoots you straight up and then you go straight down. Uh, we have Accelerator at uh, Knott's Berry Farm, uh, which I've never done myself. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna be. It's gonna be a challenge, but I think I can do it. I have the ride poster as my wallpaper on my phone. I gotta conquer Velocicoaster. On Hagrid's, I was able to use the ticket on my phone to rent a locker, no problem. Here, you can't do that. So what you do, you go to one of the team members working, and they'll give you a locker ticket because there's metal detectors, as Mr. DNA will tell you, and uh, that'll help out a lot. All right, everyone. The next time I'll be back, I will have ridden Velocicoaster. Probably not because it is too bright. There we go. It's just too intense for me to do multiple times in a row. So I'm gonna take a break and uh, see what else I can do before the park opens officially. Yeah, I did that.
So while I wait for the rest of the park to open, I'm gonna take you into the Jurassic Park Discovery Center, uh, which is basically the visitor center from the first movie. Uh. It's turned into sort of a Velocicoaster gift shop. Uh. But uh, yeah, mainly up front. And then uh, we got that here. And this painting here uh, used to be at the Jurassic Cafe at Universal Studios Hollywood back when it was themed to Jurassic Park. But since it's now themed to Jurassic World over there, this is gone. And I'm glad to see that this is still here at Islands of Adventure. officially opens to the general public in five minutes, but Hagrid's is now at 100 minutes. I think that may be a bit of an exaggeration now that I've been here. So I just wanted to check this out and now let's head back to Jurassic Park. I decided to walk back through the Lost Continent to take this bridge back over to Jurassic Park. This is a nice addition. I appreciate these uh, fences. Just in case something falls on top of us as riders are going on Velocicoaster. It's now 9 a.m. Islands of Adventure should be open for the rest of the general public. And that means I'm heading to a ride that we used to have at Universal Studios Hollywood, but kind of changed. It's pretty obvious what it is. Yeah, it's time to head on River Adventure, which is still closed. So River Adventure is still not open yet. Um, and these things tend to happen. Uh, there are a few technical issues that they have to work out before park opening or before the specific opening of a ride. Um, they're testing it right now and this might not sound like that big a deal, but I can't tell you how happy I am to see one of those old yellow and orange boats. That is, it's, it's so good to see those again. Uh, Skull Island Reign of Kong is not too far away, so if that's open, I'll hop on. If not, I'll track back to River Adventure and try to hop on that. So there used to be two Jurassic Park gates, and then they tore the old gate down and put in Skull Island Reign of Kong. So I had to turn back because Skull Island Reign of Kong doesn't open until 9.30 actually. So I'm just gonna head back to River Adventure and see if I can get on. Ooh, ooh miss! Ooh, that... That felt good. The fog is starting to clear up. We can actually see a blue sky. And it is now open. So I am drenched. I just got off River Adventure and um, some water dripping off my hat. Uh, luckily the camera's not wet because this new bag I got is waterproof so this camera stayed dry but yeah uh, I'm wet. They put me in the front row which I made a YouTube short video about how at Jurassic World the ride in California this drop right here doesn't get you all that wet. It's the little one that gets you wet uh, inside. That's the reverse here. That little one up there doesn't get you all wet in the front. So I thought, oh, that wasn't too bad. The worst is over. But then I went down the big drop. See how big that splash is? That's why I got soaked as I did. But yeah, uh, time to move on. Let's go to Skull Island. All right, the sun's starting to come out. The sky's starting to get a little more blue. There's a, a fog machine going out somewhere, but now it's time for Skull Island Reign of Kong. This is giving me Indiana Jones adventure vibes from Disneyland. Just so creepy, spooky, and it takes place in the uh, 30s also. Oh, jeez, what was that? <laughs> Ooh. That's really unsafe. 
settling and it's staring at me. So as somebody who is familiar with King Kong 360 3D on the studio tour, this is better. Like I love King Kong 360 3D, but the one thing that this uh, segment of the ride has that the studio tour doesn't are wind effects uh, and a full-on score. Uh, so I would love to see that added to the studio tour at some point. I know there have to be changes because uh, in this ride, you can't have a tram from the studio tour being pulled by a V-Rex. You gotta have the ride vehicle for this ride. Uh, but having music and those wind effects that I felt on Skull Island uh, would make King Kong 360 3D at Universal Studios Hollywood even better. So, fingers crossed. So here's a slight disappointment. Dudley Do-Right's Ripsalt Falls is closed for its annual maintenance. And this is not a ride that's high on my priority. Like, I'm not gonna say my day is ruined because I didn't go on Dudley Do-Right, but I've been to Universal Orlando three times in my lifetime. Two out of those three times, uh, Ripsaw Falls has been closed for maintenance. So, uh, yeah, won't be doing it this year. Turns out there's a lot of construction walls here in Toon Lagoon, huh? but at least Popeye's is Popeye's open? It should be. Yeah, it's open. It says it has a 10 minute wait down there. Which I'm not gonna do. Huh? I'm feeling a bit more dry after River Adventure, but I think I'll save Popeye's for now. Let's head to probably my favorite land in all of Islands of Adventure. Marvel Superhero Island. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I was here last. I know in this video alone, I talked about several times, oh, last time I was here, yada, yada, yada. That was Doctor Doom. Uh, the last time I was here specifically was February of 2008. Uh, three months before Iron Man came out. So the MCU was non-existent at this point. Also back in 2008, Carol Danvers here was known as Miss Marvel. She didn't take on the role of Captain Marvel until at least five years later, and Kamala Khan hadn't been created yet. But now it's time to do what might possibly be my favorite ride in the entire resort. Uh, the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. And the great thing about it, it's only a five minute wait. is elastic sue can fade from sight johnny is the human torch the thing just loves to fight i'm sorry i had to do it as a kid i always thought that marvel superhero island was themed to the run of 90s marvel cartoons like spider-man x-men hulk fantastic four so i just had to sing the fantastic four theme song uh but yeah uh, I'm gonna go on Hulk now. So the entrance to Hulk was different last time I was here. This statue didn't exist at all. And I understand that they've done some updates on the ride. They had to redo the whole track. I think the queue is different. So I'm excited to hop on. So I had to step out of Marvel Superhero Island for a bit because it can be so loud in there. But uh, yeah, the Incredible Hulk, still, still pretty great. Still a fun ride, but it's a lot bumpier than I remember. And I think just because Hagrid's and Velocicoaster exists, it's now the third best coaster in the park. Uh, but Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, still amazing. I still love that ride. Yes, it's very similar to Transformers. So for those of you familiar with Universal Studios Hollywood, you might end up going to Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and being underwhelmed because it's the same ride system as Transformers. But 
This ride predates Transformers by at least 11 years. Uh, so it has that going for it. And I think it utilizes the real world sets and the 3D screens far better than Transformers. And, like here at Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, it's about 50-50. Transformers, they mostly rely on screens. And then the Jurassic World Adventure ride in Beijing is mostly practical sets and animatronics. Uh, but yeah, Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man is still great. Now I'm going to do something that I've never done here at Islands of Adventure. I'm actually going to go into Seuss Landing because I've never done any rides in this land. So this will be something I'm experiencing for the first time also. I was 17 last time I was at Islands of Adventure and I just never did anything here in Seuss Landing because well, it's, I, in my mind it's like it's a kid's place. Why would I want this. I want Hulk. I want Spider-Man. I want Jurassic Park. I want those kinds of thrills. But as I've gotten older, I've learned to appreciate a lot of the stuff that uh, every theme park has, including the stuff that's made for families. And even then, I just like the way this place looks. The way it's designed, it looks like it's straight out of the Dr. Seuss books. So I just did Cat in the Hat for the first time, and it's a charming dark ride. But I will say that ride has certainly seen better days in terms of its animatronics. I mean, people talk about how River Adventures falling apart. River Adventures seemed fine to me. Yeah? It did could require some work. I'm not gonna deny that, but Cat in the Hat, I think, is off worse uh, and could really use an update. Now time for another ride I've never done before, the High in the Sky Seuss Trolley Train Ride. cute ride. Not a whole lot to it, but you got some amazing views of Islands of Adventure. Uh, uh, now I'm gonna just try to find something else to do here and then I'm gonna head over to Universal Studios Florida. Then I'm gonna check out the rest of Hogsmeade since I'm, again, so familiar with the Hollywood version. Here's what I missed earlier today because I was in a rush. Uh, think left and think right. Uh, think low and think high. Oh, the thinks you can think up if only you try. Bye bye. <laughs> They say we're in Hogsmeade, but really it's Bizarro World for me. I'm not used to coming around the corner and seeing the entrance for a roller coaster. This is usually just a wall in Hollywood. So this is very, 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 very surreal. So I might be weirded out by the geography of this Hogsmeade, but uh, maybe the butterbeer will be the same. Oh, mmm. Just as good as ever. Yeah, it's still the same as it is in Hollywood. It makes me feel like I'm at home. Just uh, coming to Hogsmeade, grabbing a butter beer at um, Hogshead. The only difference is that um, there's a Velocicoaster over there, which we do not have in Hollywood. to go on Forbidden Journey, but uh, lockers are down here. Yeah, they have a separate area for lockers at Forbidden Journey under these rocks, which at Hollywood, this whole place would be extended queue. So now here's the multi-million dollar question. If Forbidden Journey lockers in Orlando are back there, what's around the corner when you go inside? Oh, it's, okay, this is very different. Okay, it's a gift shop. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, this is totally bizarro for me. So this is what the green room looks like here in Orlando. Uh, this would be a wall in Hollywood. The lockers are right over there. You can hear the Jurassic Park theme just out in the distance. Uh, like, in fact, I think that's the pathway it takes you to Velocicoaster. And uh, there's no mountain view here, uh, which uh, 
Hollywood wins in that aspect. There are actually some noticeable differences between this Forbidden Journey and the one back in Hollywood, but you have to know one or the other inside and out to really spot those differences. Uh, and uh, once I finish this series of vlogs, I'll be making a video showcasing as many differences that I can show off uh, between Universal Orlando and Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, so uh, with that said, I'm gonna leave Islands of Adventure. I'm gonna head back to my hotel, do a change of shirts, and then head to Universal Studios Florida. So I'll see you guys there. All right, I'm now back at Universal Studios Florida. I got a change of shirts and prep for tonight. So I'll be doing Halloween Horror Nights later tonight, and that'll be a separate video. But for now, let's just hop into Universal Studios Florida and see what they have to offer. So I think first up, I'm just gonna do the newest thing. I recently checked the app right before walking up to the archway, and most of the rides seem to be about a 15 minute wait, even Escape from Gringotts. Uh, yeah, Despicable Me, Mini Mayhem, we have that in Hollywood. Not really worth my time, but this. Oh, wow. I'm more amazed by the AC in here, but this is all cool. The launch button is for your secondary launcher. And have limited ammo. Reload your launcher ammo by blasting a launcher reload box. This feels like being at an actual con. And oh. Hello? Is it stereotypical to say that it wouldn't be a Florida trip without a gator of some sort? I feel like it might be. Some Villain Con Minion Blast. It was cute. I wouldn't rush out to ride it again because I think they're better like video game type rides out there. Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge being one of them. Uh, because it was kind of difficult to follow. Like, I didn't know where I was shooting after a while. I was just like shooting mindlessly like Rambo. Like, you know, Rambo never shoots straight. Uh, yeah, it was fun. I wouldn't rush out to do it again, but uh, it's, it's okay. Speaking of better video game rides, Men in Black. Let's go on it. Oh, hey, worms. Okay, I have to be honest, I don't know how this works either. I just like randomly start shooting things like Rambo again. So, uh, I don't know, it's been 15 years, maybe I'll get better at it. That was just as fun as I remember it 15 years ago. And uh, I finally know how to work that thing. Basically, you just shoot the alien eyes. That's it. When I was younger, I was 17, I just, again, started randomly shooting everything in sight. And it was a weird experience because they put me in the last row of the ride vehicle, but it was one where next to it, they had a big space open for wheelchairs or ECVs. And it only had two blasters in that row, so I just ended up using both uh, blasters and dual wielding. Uh, it was a weird experience. But uh, now let's go from blasting aliens to getting one home. I can still imagine seeing Kid Zone in this area, but they're updating it for obviously a DreamWorks theme. I think that's Shrek's house that they're building there. Certainly looks like it, uh, but we're not here for a DreamWorks construction update video. We're here for E.T. Adventure. 15 minute wait. <laughs> I've missed this place. I don't remember the smell though. I think that may be new.
a good long 20 years before they decide to take E.T. down because it is really a classic. Um, yeah, the animatronics have not aged well and it clearly has that early 90s feel to it, but I still love it. John Williams' score still gets me every time I hear it, whether it's the movie or the ride. Uh, it's, yeah, I love it. And now it's time to write the thing that replaced E.T. at Universal Studios Hollywood. Kind of. Mambo! Didn't expect to hear West Side Story music here, but hey, I have no complaints. I feel like a lot of people are always surprised when they are familiar with one mummy and then they go on the other and realize it's a completely different ride. I mean, it's the same ride vehicle, the same indoor roller coaster, but the track layout's different. Uh, the Hollywood one goes backwards really fast, whereas this one in Florida has a drop. I can't decide which one I like over the other. Uh, they both have their um, advantages. I would say that this one is probably a little scarier just because at Hollywood I can see the track layout. There are enough lights on in the Hollywood version where I can see where I'm going next. The Florida one, I can't see anything. So uh, yeah, I think Florida wins. And also Florida has Brennan Frazier. So um, yeah, that's good. And with that being said, I'm going to call it a day here, folks. Uh, well, at least for this video here. Uh, I know there's a lot that I didn't get to here at Universal Studios Florida, but they're setting up for Halloween Horror Nights. I'm gonna do the Stay and Scream section. That way I can try to knock out one of the houses before it opens at 7 p.m. But I'm actually planning to start my day at Universal Studios Florida tomorrow. So anything that I missed here, I'll show off tomorrow. But uh, till then, thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that button. Make sure to like the video, leave a comment. If you wanna follow me elsewhere, you can go to my movie review channel, Alexander Robinson's Movie and TV Reviews. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Letterboxd, Threads, Facebook. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, have a good day, take care, and safe travels.